Hey guys, disclaimer here. Um, this is the first video I've ever shot off my car. I make a lot of mistakes in it. So please, please, please don't hold it against me. Enjoy. All right, guys. So I am starting this video inside uh, the C4S and the car is currently running. And I know I owed you guys uh, review of this car because since I bought the car I have to be honest and and this review here is gonna be like I you know I'm not your typical youtuber I just literally I'm just rolling and I am I am telling as I go along how I feel about this car I've had this car now for about I don't remember exactly I bought it I think in August 20 something maybe maybe over a month just over a shy of a month and um, the reason why I haven't uploaded um, a video since my last video of uh, it turned out that it wasn't the actual clutch that was wrong. So now I have um, another clutch just waiting to be installed in case this one goes. But when I purchased this car, this car came with a brand new clutch, um, brand new IMS bearing, RMS, brakes, rotors, tires. So um, I bought it, I mentioned with I think about 91,000 miles. Right now I am at about 93. So I didn't put much mileage on the car, but the car didn't sit either. So I did drive this car as I am right now. It's uh, September in New York. As you guys can see, the weather is amazing. This whole entire week is supposed to be sunny and just like fantastic back road driving weather slash, you know, cruising highway weather, you know, things like that. Um, I don't really push this car hard. I mean, don't get me wrong. I drive this car with every spirit that Porsche put into it. But um, I'm not the suicidal maniac, you know, that's going to go 120, 30, 40 or 140 miles an hour. Though this car can do that. When I tell you this car can do that, this car is, is beyond capable of so much than I think what Porsche even you know admitted at the time or even today um, one thing I learned about this uh, 4s after driving my friend's normal 996 um, cabriolet and also driving a 996 coupe c2 coupe um, Porsche in every single Porsche and they put more of an emphasis on it today than they did back when this car was made um, every single Porsche you know, people like to joke and say, ah, oh, you know, Porsche is a Volkswagen or, you know, uh, you know, what's the difference between this 911 and that 911? I do agree in some sorts that, you know, Porsche makes sure that you still get the Porsche DNA no matter what tier of 911 you purchase. Now, a Panamera and, you know, all these other cars and Cayennes and 718 Caymans and all that. I mean, yes, they're Porsches, but they're, they don't drive like a 911. You know, Porsche pretty much puts... I would say most of their focus, their engineering and their resources behind the 911. Yes, I know they're focusing on the Taycan and things like that. But the 911 is just, the you know, without 911s, you know, I don't know what is a what's Porsche, you know. So anyway, so the difference is I can tell you right now and why I'm starting this review in the car is one, when you're sitting in the 4S, there's a theater that happens in this car. I mean, I just cannot explain it, but there is absolute theater sitting in this car. Just the way when you look over the arches of the car, you know, because remember that the 4S's body is a 911 Turbo's body. So most people don't realize it, but the front arches, as I, let me go in and out of the car, the front arches of the 4S is wider than a normal 996. So a normal 996 Cabriolet or, or you know, um, uh, Coupe, it's, it's a little bit thinner in the front than the 4S. So when you're sitting inside the 4S, you get a feel of that you're in a more significant car than, you know, and, and nothing against the, the normal 996s. A friend of mine has one and I've driven that car. I've driven two of those cars, I think maybe more. You know, it, it's sorry about the wind, guys. I, I know it's hitting the camera, the microphone. The thing about uh, the 4S is, you know, when you're sitting in this car, you know you're in something significant. 
you're not in you know a cabriolet 996 or um a coupe you know everything about the design when you're in the car you know you're you're in a wider car just the sounds from the engine i mean i i just cannot explain it i drove this car last night and you know i very rarely drive at nights you know because i'm in ho in the house by you know a certain time but you know i drove it in the nighttime and just sitting in the car and just the theater, you know, that was happening behind me, you know, the sounds of the engine, you know, holding the steering wheel and, you know, looking over the arches and you just see that wide angle in the front. And then you look in the rear view mirror and you see those wide, those wide rear butt tips, you know, and you're just like, oh my God, like this is an event, you know, and that's how I feel every single time I step into this car. It's an event. It's just simply an event. You know, I, again, no hating on a normal 996. They're all fantastic cars, but there's something different about the 4S. Obviously, you could see it physically. You know, the car is different, the brakes, the rotors, the tires, everything. But not just that, but, you know, when you're inside a 4S, you know, Porsche, people like to say, oh, you know, it's three point, it's a 3.6 liter engine. It's just, I've got that same engine in my Boxster. Or I've got that same engine in my, um, in my, uh, in my, um, you know, my regular 996. So what's the difference? No, there is a massive difference between a 3.6 liter, um, uh, 996 than a C4S. You know, to go back to my point, as I said earlier, Porsche is putting more of an emphasis today on the fact that every single 911 is dynamic. They didn't do so much in, you know, back in the 2000s, they didn't emphasize that much, but Porsche owners knew that. There is a different engineering that went into the 996 4S than also what went into the turbo. Yes, it's the same body. Yes, it's the, 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 the same brakes, the same chassis, the same everything. But a naturally aspirated engine, you know, with the four wheel drive, you know, with those wide arches, you know, it's just the way the power comes on when you're in those high RPMs, you know, and a lot of people like to say, oh, OK, a 4S basically, you know, it's it's slower because it's heavier because of the all wheel drive. Well, listen, you know, I don't need to win a Le Mans race. You know, the only thing I need to know is that I have the power that will, you know, enable me to enjoy every single limit or close to the limit of what the car was designed or intended to be. And also, you know, enjoy the engineering that went into such a fine automobile. Now, you know, we have all these new YouTubers and all these guys with all these McLarens and all these cars. And again, I love those cars. I am not hating on any of them. But I've driven a McLaren. I've also had an Aston Martin um, Quattroporte back in 08 when they first came out, GTS. I've also owned an Aston Martin DB9, um, well, a BMW uh, M6, um, not M6, um, 650, you know, grand, uh, not Grand Sport, um, convertible. Anyway, my point is, I've been in those cars and I've driven, I've driven in, you know, faster cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. And you know what, one of the things, and I've driven them, one of the things about those cars is, you know, when you have so much power, you know, you don't really get to enjoy it. You know, like a friend of mine has a, 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 um, a, a GT2, you know, but the thing about GT2s is they're nice cars, but when you're in New York and you're in everyday driving and you're doing, I mean, where are you really gonna, you know, unleash that power? And the moment you unleash that power, you have to hit the brakes again, you know? So it's not so much fun. But the thing about the uh, 4S that I love, you know, or any 996 for that matter, is the fact that it has usable power. So you could push the car close to its limits, you know, on, you know, of course, a, a, a back road, you know, where you don't have cars flying out in front of you, you know, and you could push the car close to its limits and not feel as if, you know, you don't have the ability to control the car itself. And that's fun. You know, that's where the fun lies in owning a true sports car. You know, I get it. You know, the Porsche, you know, even with some of the cars they're making today and McLaren and Lamborghini and Ferrari and, you know, Lotus and all these brands, you know, they have to keep up. You know, every person wants the car to say, I've got the fastest car or my car could do seven, you know, my car's got 700 horsepower or a thousand horsepower. But it's, you know, really and truly, you don't need that. 
I'm also going to touch on a, on, a, on a part of this subject. What I discovered, you know, you know, this is my first Porsche, you know, with this car is, you know, power to weight ratio. You know, most people don't really focus on that. You know, power to weight ratio. Basically, this car has 320 horsepower, right? But the car weighs, I mean, and, and, and that's a toss up. You can comment, you know, on what you think. But, you know, the official figures are this car weighs about 20, anywhere, some people say between 2,800 or 2,900 pounds. You know, that's the figure. All right. So if you put in 2,900 pounds and 320 horsepower, you know, the car, you know, realistically, it's not. And, and on top of that, your engine is sitting on your back, your rear wheel. So it's not as if you have a front engine car where, you know, it loses power because the power has to be distributed from the front to the back. You have 320 sitting on the rear wheels. So you're not losing power. That's 320 to the wheels. That's not 320 from the front. And then it's going to break down towards the back of the car. So my point is, this car is beyond capable of hanging with some of the newest Porsches and fa or quote unquote faster Porsches because people think oh well your car you know it's it says it's five point this you know uh, zero to 60 you know what blah 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 blow me three times over and back again you know the car how many t you know last night in for instance I'm driving this car here comes this this guy in a BMW 335 and it sounds like he you know upgraded the turbos and the turbos are whistling all the way around and I'm just cruising you know I have nothing to prove I'm in a 911 4S dude what do I have to prove you know nothing against uh, my other car is a BMW I've went through multiple BMWs but you know here he is but he can't use that power the minute that you hear that pssst, you know coming out of his car he's got to hit the brakes and he's stuck behind a you know a station wagon or suv trying to break over and here i am and here i am in the left lane you know i just put my car in the set drop it down on not second to third because i was in fourth you know build up the rpms you know and the, the one thing about this car is you know for all those people that are saying ah oh, 4s is slower because it's four-wheel drive oh uh, the the regular carrera is faster ha huh. yes it is but Here's the difference. You can't corner whoever has one like a forest can corner. See, the difference is you can have speed and all these things and, you know, faster. But if you can't corner or maneuver or, or you know, just at the drop of a hat, you know, go up on the bumper of the car in front of you and the, and the little bit of space that you have that literally air can get through and you can just, just tap the steering wheel and your car can just glide over into the next lane and just fly out of there you're not going anywhere. And the one thing about this 4S is this car's maneuverability is beyond anything I've ever experienced. And you guys, you can talk about all these other new cars. What I'm saying is having the ability to handle, having the ability to maneuver, also having the power enough to get you out of that, that I would say, you know, that um, little, you know, once you maneuver, you go around the car or wherever, you know, a lot of cars, if you have speed, you know, or, or um, you don't have the, uh, what is it that I'm looking for? You know, you, you're in, a car's in front of you, you try to, you pull out of there, but you have enough power with the four wheel drive to get the engine going again, up in those higher RPMs to keep the same speed is what I'm saying. Some cars that don't have the maneuverability, once they swing into one lane and swing out of another lane, they lose a lot of power and then they have to build that power back up. This car doesn't do that. With the four wheel drive, you just get out of those corners and you hear that the, the exhaust manifolds open up and you hear that and, it, and it's gone. You know, I'm good with that power because I can control it. So anyway, um, you know, that's one of the things that I love, absolutely love about this 4S. Um, since I've had the car after the little mishap um, that's been fixed, I haven't had any issues at all. Um, the engine runs beautifully. It's running right now. Um, I have no issues as far as every day I get out. You know, I look at, even though I had it checked over, I look at the, ex at the exhaust. No, you know, I don't have one exhaust that's darker than the other or, you know, so everything on this car has been working phenomenally. Um, you know, no weird issues, sounds or anything. I mean, the car drives absolutely amazing. Um, one of the things about this car that I absolutely love 
is what Porsche has done with the leather. Like, you know, this car is a 2004. Um, this was the, the last model year for the coupes. Um, 2005, I think, was the last model year for the uh, convertibles and uh, I think the turbos. But no, don't quote me on that. But um, one thing I love about the leather that Porsche has used on their cars is it's top of the line leather. So basically, and part of my car, because I haven't cleaned it, I've been enjoying this car so much that, you know, I mean, I've cleaned the exterior of the car, but um, I haven't had a chance because I had my daughter and my wife inside the car. So my daughter has like some spots all over it. But one thing I love about the leather on this car or one second one thing i love about this car is the leather that porsche uses i mean the leather is just phenomenal as i said this car is a 04 and i mean the leather is like brand new i mean look at these seats it's like you know look at that 91 or i got it with 91,000 miles i'm at 93 and that leather even in the back seat i mean i have i have things back there but i mean the car is absolutely mint you know i mean the steering wheel is not you know like cars this age you know the leather gets holes in it things like that i mean the gps works everything works i just don't ever use it because i don't need it i mean just the sounds from this car <laughs> i mean i don't really listen to music in this car because there's you know the sound just the sound from the engine is just amazing so anyway so um, just wrapping things up. I mean, the car has been phenomenal. You know, again, a 4S is just something different than any 911. And I can tell anyone that the DNA that went into a Carrera 4S is different from a 996. It's different from the turbo. And the turbo is also a nice car as well. I think, you know, I'm still contemplating, you know, maybe next year, maybe my next move is to step into a turbo, but I've been having so much fun with this 4S. It's just absolutely unbelievable, the car. And again, you know, anyone who comments about these cars not looking good, I agree with you. 4S's, 996's do not photograph well at all. Because again, as I'm looking at the car here and I'm looking at this video, it's just two different worlds. When you're standing looking at a 996, especially a 4S, then you see the beauty every single angle of this car. I mean, the paint on this car is immaculate. I just love this angle right here. When you look at the car and you see, you see this, the wheel, how wide the wheel is and you know how like dramatically like, you know, fat and beefy they look, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it's a different machine, you know, the 4S is a different machine and I would classify the 4S as being a true driver's car. Um, I love a turbo, but I don't think, you know, the turbo would just be for me as a, a car that I always desired, you know, and I would just want to own. But the 4S also is that car, but it's also that car that I'm, I feel like I'm going to have this car for a very long time. You know, like, I mean, oh my gosh, like right now the sun just like came out and I mean, just looking at this car, it's like, I want to have sex with this damn thing. Seriously. It's like every time I sit in this car, I just get like these goosebumps on me, you know? And, um, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying it because it's, you know, this is not my first foray into, you know, super sports car or, you know, whatever you want to call it. You know, I've been through a few, so, you know, but this, you know, Porsche has, really impressed me to the point where it's actually given me an insight into you know what porsche intended for the driver's car or you know what they call a true driver's car and um you know it's just something that i i don't know i don't think i would ever part with this car another subject i'd like to touch on is that the brakes on this car is just phenomenal I mean, these brakes, these big brakes are just, I mean, I, I've, I didn't have to really use them until the other day when I had a crazy, like, teenage girl who decided to make, and my wheels are a bit dirty, you know, um, I, you know, I put, um, I put, uh, oh, I'll, I'll get to that later, but yeah, so I had a, a teenage crazy girl who decides to make a right turn from the left lane while I'm coming down the street without looking and I literally had to just 
turn the car to the right, almost hit a tree, and and slam on the brakes. But those brakes are like, they're, I call them thrusters because they thrust you forward. They're so sharp that literally, I was as soon as she turned over, I was like, oh, I was like, Arr! as soon as I just tapped the brake, the car just, it just, it's like it almost stopped the car, just dead stop, you know. And I was like, wow, you know, those brakes are just really impressive. Yeah, so one of the things I also wanted to touch on is, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, are looking to buy this car or a 996 and they're wondering, you know, okay, should I get a 996, you know, um, automatic or manual? Well, I could just say one thing. Um, I was, I, I looked at at least four or five of these cars before I settled on this one. And why I settled on this one was because of the options. Um, you know, the car was also clean. It had the IMS done. All of that stuff was done. Um, so there was really nothing I needed to do to this car. I mean, I still have it. And I, I think maybe not for another year or two years, maybe I need to do anything on this car. So, you know, this is the reason. But one of the things I was looking at, I test drove a Tiptronic. And the thing is, I love the Tiptronic cars. You know, you still got the, or, you know, the same performance out of it. Well, not necessarily out of the Tiptronic. Yeah, the Tiptronic's a little bit faster. But the difference is, I can say, you know, I didn't want to bother with a manual because in New York, once you're stuck in traffic, I mean, having a manual shift car is like, you know, you just dread that, you know, once you see red lights. But, you know, when you're in a 4S and you're sitting behind the wheel and you see those wide arches in the front and those wide arches in the back, I mean, sometimes I actually look forward to traffic because I don't want to make it home so fast. I still want to sit in this car. So I even come up with reasons on things to do just to drive this car. Or I'll drive from Long Island to Williamsburg, Brooklyn, just to go to Whole Foods, just to, to get meat and drive back again, you know? So you, you, you come up with things to do when you own this this car and another thing too I'll get back to the manualistic thing another thing too about this car is when people see a 4s they know even if they don't know Porsches they know that this car is something different than any other Porsche and I'm telling you one thing even the new 991s I'm on a highway with 991s I see a 991 in front I'm on the highway and I am shocked and I'm not saying this I'm just being honest I am so shocked at the responses that I get just from having this 4S because I'll see people on the highway and they're like, is that a turbo or what kind of Porsche is that? What year is that Porsche? And I'm like, you know, because to me, I'm like, well, this is a 04, you know, 4S. I'm not trying to impress anyone. I just absolutely love this car. But I'm so amazed at how many people just or how people respond to this car I mean I cannot pull into a gas station without not having a conversation about this car you know like I, I had a guy stand for you know over an hour you know talking to me and not just one I mean multiple wherever I go people are you know commenting or saying it's saying things or oh I've never seen this Porsche before um, is this a special like special order or you know and I'm like no man this is a 04 C4S you know but I'm you know I'm amazed at the, the reaction and oh my gosh I'm sorry I'm like just I wish you guys could stand here and look at this car I'm, I'm gonna stop rambling on but now the Sun is coming back out again I know my hands are a little shaky because I'm trying to hold this and you know but the car just looks so good so good anyway so I'm just still amazed at the you know the responses that I, I get about this car or people comments and and things like that I mean and you know they always they had a, I think Doug DeMera Doug DeMera had a video about you know having a Ferrari and getting woman <laughs> buy a Porsche not just any Porsche buy a 911 you know why more women respond to this car than I ever got with any of the cars I've had. You know, BMW's uh, 650, grand, 650 convertible, white with red interior, absolutely no comments. Aston Martin DB9, no comments. Maserati Quattroporte, no comments. Multiple BMWs, no comments. Porsche C4S 911, I get women that literally when I stop at gas station, like I'm looking over and they're just like staring at me. Like, you know, like I'm, I just pull up in some amazing machine. I mean, I'm being honest, it's just that type of car where, you know, it's still a great value, you know, but at the same time, you know, it has so much character that, you know, it, it, it just, 
every angle and and you know like every drive every time I get into this car you know holding that steering wheel and you're 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 just like crouched in the seats and you know that gear in your hands and you know the car is just drama you know you stop at a light and you hear all those sounds coming from the engine which sometimes gives me a heart attack because sometimes I feel like I hear a sound that I've never heard before and I'm like holy shit what the hell is that what's going on but you know it's just me you know but you don't get that in the new Porsches you know like you don't get that theater not no don't get me wrong it is a different type of theater but with these cars you know you just that 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 uh that um sound that woo woo and that you know it's just just an amazing car so i'm wrapping this up anyway so um now stick or manual i'm big stick or manual um tiptronic or manual well let's just say this for me you know if i had a choice after having the manual car you know, there's times where I'm like, I wish I, I wish I had a Tiptronic, but 99% of the time, I'm very happy that I ended up getting a manual because I was actually searching for a Tiptronic. I drove the Tiptronic C4S. It is a great car. You will get the similar performance. And when I use the word similar performance, it's a little bit more generic in the drive than the manual. Now, if you really want to get the true Porsche experience, you know, the sounds of that engine and the revs and also getting the performance out of the engine, then I recommend getting a manual car. You know, there's just no comparison. You know, the connection, like when I drive this car and I get back into my BMW, which is my daily, I have a, a, a wagon. You know, when I get into that car, I just get into that car and I just put it in drive and I feel like, you know, I'm sitting on a, on a sofa, you know, being driven. You know, this car, when I get into this car, I feel alive. And that's the truth, honestly. I'm, I just feel alive. I feel connected to the car because the car cannot do without me. You know, like every, you know, the way you handle the clutch, the way you handle the gears, the way the engine and everything, it's like the engine is your heartbeat or you know and the car is your body you know and you're just filling it with food i don't know if that makes any sense you know i'm doing this as a raw uncut you know review sorry about that so you know the the stick it's just it's another world you know and um i would recommend if okay so let's boil this down if you're a person who all you want to do is get into your car start the engine and go from a to b and you don't want to worry about you know perform not to say performance but like you know like a true driving experience then get a tiptronic you know if you just want to get a porsche and you want to just go on a drive with your wife and you don't want to worry about anything and you don't want to deal with having to shift or you know anything like that and you want to be comfortable yes get a tiptronic i felt like that in the beginning but after getting in the manual i'm so happy i didn't do that now, if you're a driver, and when I say a driver, not an irresponsible driver, but someone who, you know, there's another thing about these cars and Porsches, you have to appreciate a Porsche, you know, you cannot have a Porsche and, you know, or, or you know, there, there are a lot of 99, regular 996s out there, but when you get into a level of a C4S, you know, or a turbo, or a 40th anniversary, you know, and not just talking about 996s, I mean 991s, 997s, you know, you have to appreciate a car like this. You know, it's you're 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 driving this car and a lot of people are like say, oh, 996 and never appreciate. Well, I didn't buy this 996, this 4S for it to appreciate to, to make money out of it. I mean, I'm 93,000 miles and I'm probably gonna maybe get this car to 140,000 miles, you know, or more, you know, so you don't buy this car to, you know, or, or to me at least, I'm not buying a Porsche to, to um, you know, for appreciation or as an investment. I'm buying this car to drive it. This car is not going to sit in the garage and only come out, you know, and gets, gets wiped down or whatever. I'm going to drive it, you know, just drive it. The best thing, and this is what a lot of people forget, in the Porsche manual, the Porsche manuals tells you, the best thing you could do for your Porsche is to drive it. Don't baby it. Don't let it sit around. Don't let it stay in the garage and bring it out. This is where a lot of your problems come into play. 
especially with a 996 because a 996 is supposed to be driven your oil leaks your rms your your um your bore scoring issues and all of this you have these people have these cars sitting in a garage waiting for for appreciation don't do that that's the worst thing you could ever do to a porsche is to let it come out of the garage maybe four or five times a year or, or every other weekend no drive the damn car drive it the car was designed to be driven the hoses all the the connections everything the brake the lines all of that they need regular exercise it's a sports car it does not operate like a bmw or uh, um, a cayenne or a camry this car is meant to be driven so dr the best thing you could do for your porsche is to drive it so anyway, to sum this video up, I'm 30 minutes in now. Hopefully it's not shaking and my microphone worked well. You know, I absolutely love this car. I have no issues with this car. I don't know if I touched on everything that I really wanted to talk about, but um, I will be uploading more videos. I recommend anyone buy a 996 4S now. Buy it now. Oh, last point. You know, higher mileage cars versus lower mileage cars. Me personally, I did research for literally two years before I even decided to buy one of these cars. I was reading every article, watching every video of people who own these cars, all of that. Now, you see, the thing about the, these, these cars is, you know, it's that the, the lower mileage cars, what I, when, I was, when I was looking to buy this car, a lot of the lower mileage cars people buy because, oh, it's lower mileage, it doesn't have that much issues. No, you're wrong. A lot of the lower mileage cars that I was looking at, yes, they didn't have any issues at the time, but you have to keep in mind, they haven't been through the phases of their life yet. You know, when you're looking at an 04 car with 40,000 miles, remember that, you know, if the IMS and all these things haven't been taken care of, you know, you have those things to think about. You have, you know, the hoses to think about. That's also another important part of, of um, a Porsche, the hoses, the brake lines, all these things. You know, so a 40,000 mile car, that's a 04, you can tell this car hasn't been driven. You know, the car has just been, you know, maybe a weekend driver passed through a few owners. You know, yes, it has a service history, but the minute you buy that car and you might decide to you know, drive it a little bit more, something goes and breaks. Another thing goes and breaks, and another thing goes and breaks. Not saying that this is gonna happen to every car, but that's one of the things that you might face if you buy a lower mileage car, because the car hasn't been through spaces, and that goes for any car. You know, I have a BMW wagon, and I'm, I, I'm at 104,000 miles right now, but you know why I'm happy? Because it was a one owner, and the car has literally been through, at 60,000 miles, they have a problem with the, um, with the uh, oil, the oil filter pump or something like that, you know, but all that stuff has been taken care of because it's been through those phases. Same as this 4S, you know, this 4S had 91,000 miles, but when I bought it, everything was done. The belts are done. When I looked in the car, the belts were done. The, the uh, starter was done. You know, the battery was new, you know, so everything was done. And that's the beauty when you get a car that's higher mileage but also taken care of there's a difference you know but chances are once a, a 911 has made it to a hundred thousand and and guys don't shy away from purchasing uh, a 4s that maybe has 120,000 miles on it because guess what if it's made it to 120,000 miles you know a lot of things had to have been done otherwise that car would have never made it to 120,000 or 100 you know 40,000 miles um, and there's some great deals on Auto Trader right now where, you know, one guy in uh, Washington is selling a silver, um, a silver 4S Tiptronic for 17 grand. All service records and everything, you know. So, I mean, you just, you just can't go wrong, you know. Again, if you're purchasing these cars for investment purposes, you know, I think you should put your money in real estate. You know, I put my money in real estate and thank God that's why I'm able to do this, you know, and, and, and hopefully soon more. So, guys, um, comment below, please. Oh, also, please like, share, subscribe. Um, and thank you to all my 15 subscribers. You know, I'm still going to be making videos and talking about cars because that's my passion. Um, you know, I have 15 subscribers. Thank you to all of you 15 guys for following me. For watching my videos you know I don't need a million I don't you know yes it would be nice to have a million followers but if I I'm just happy with the fact that I have 
15 subscribers and 15 people that actually spend the time to listen to what I say and dealing with my jerky hands and things like that. So I'll be touching on some more subjects soon. Um, I just wanted to upload a video to give an update. And if there's anything else you guys want to see or hear about, just let me know. I gave you my heart.